I'm always fascinated by parts of our church service that we do every week, that we perform religiously without fail. But those, if we thought about them for a second, or if we were doing them for the first time, we might wonder why we are saying that, or what it really means to say that. An example of that is from the Lord's Prayer, or actually from how we start it. We oftentimes start it by saying, we are bold to say. We are bold to say. Why bold to say? Jesus told us to pray that prayer specifically, so we're covered. <laughs> Why bold to pray? We're all saying it together, and generally that's one of the prayers that we all have memorized. S speaking of bold, it takes some chutzpah to complain as the Israelites do in our Old Testament reading, as their descendants also do in the reading that I just read. They were bold in a sense, bold to say what they were really thinking, bold to reveal what they were really feeling. It's not very flattering, of course, what they're saying, but at least they're honest. We would rather not be connected with their ingratitude, their thick-headedness, the sheer rudeness of those crowds. But it's kind of built into our liturgy every week. Without fail, we say, we are bold to say as we start the Lord's Prayer, and even more so later on when we say, give us today our daily bread. Do you detect a little bit of a child's gimme with that saying? We encounter our relationship with God by being a little desperate, a little needy. I realize that words can play tricks and they can have different meanings. Bold can mean courageous, as in to boldly go where no man has gone before in Star Trek. Bold can also, though, mean impudent or impulsive, like the bold and the beautiful, the soap opera. I, I checked, and the word bold has been in the opening to the Lord's Prayer for centuries. The author probably meant it originally in the antiquated sense of the word as merely confident or assured. But I still think it's important to ask yourselves, how do you understand that word? What do you mean when you say we are bold to pray? As you're pondering, know that you might not want to answer that question completely, though, because it takes something out of the faith journey. It sets up a pattern where if one can intellectually digest, swallow something entirely, something so important as how we relate to God, gives you a false sense of closure. Think about it in the Old Testament story, the complaining Israelites amidst their hunger find sustenance in something they call manna in Hebrew. It means literally, what is it? <laughs> it's, it's the joke, the great cosmic laugh is that God provides them something that has no name. The answer to their prayers, the thing that saved them, the celestial wonder bread, the soul food from the sky is literally a gigantic question mark. Likewise, when God revealed God's self to Moses in the burning bush, it was a similar strange name, Yahweh, I am what I am. Jesus is absolutely no better, answering questions with questions and with parables. In our gospel passage, especially, Jesus confounds and mystifies better or for worse, Jesus is willing to risk ambiguity, metaphor, miscommunication. Why? Why bold? Maybe because we're supposed to reciprocate in some way. 
That's where the boldness comes in. We have to be comfortable with that uncomfortableness, then have the courage to maintain that relationship, to kvetch, to complain, to pray boldly about it. Of course, the temptation for the preacher is to say, well, Jesus was not as skilled a communicator as I am. (laughs) This is what he really meant when he was saying, I am the bread of life, I know. Medieval times, artists would fall into this trap when painting the scene of the manna falling from the sky. They would depict manna as these perfect circular wafers, white pieces of bread, communion wafers, dropping into people's mouths. (laughs) Makes it pretty obvious, pretty clear, Manna equals bread of life equals Jesus, and we're done. Maybe you gain a little something in the comprehension, but I think you lose something along the way exploring the larger idea. Instead, we are bold to say, Roman Catholics have it, I think, as we dare to say. We approach God with some degree of uncertainty and doubt, but willing to risk something in that relationship not precisely sure what's on the other side, and honest enough to say that it might simply be misplaced confidence that's getting us there. So one bold interpretation of our Old Testament passage is that the relationship between God and the wandering Israelites is like that of between parents and a newborn. Think about it. They've only known each other a few weeks. They're finally free. The baby has been born, birthed in the amazing exodus from Egypt through the birth canal of the Red Sea. Everything is wonderful until they realize no one has any idea what they're doing. (laughs) All the dreams have come true with this new life, but can they really trust one another when times get tough? So some bold mutual testing goes on in the wilderness of this relationship. In other words, the baby is crying. Will the parent come? And will they know what to do when they get there? An even bolder interpretation could describe the relationship between God and the Israelites as two persons who are on their honeymoon. Again, they don't really know each other. They entered into this new union with great fanfare, leaving Egypt, setting off for a lifetime of adventure. Everything is supposed to be perfect, hunky-dory, magical. But then they have their first fight, and it's over food. It's interesting, in the Old Testament, the famous line gets repeated really often, no one can see God's faith face and live. It's because it would be too much for humans to bear to look at God. That having been said, humans seem to be able to complain a lot (laughs) and get away with it. Would we be so bold as to follow in our ancestors' footsteps and approach God with our true selves, with our brokenness and our bold neediness? The word that comes to mind for me is reliant. In our culture, reliant is almost a bad word, a slur. Dependent is another word in that negative vein, a word we use when we're filling out our taxes. We teach our children in schools and our homes to be independent, to be self-reliant. But with God, something else entirely is being described, a different type of relationship. God calls on us to be bold and to depend on God by asking for bread and proclaiming our Father. For us, when we pray, we are bold to say it has countercultural implications, saying that we need God, we need bread daily and forevermore saying that we don't know where we're going to get it from and revealing that we're going to mess it up. 
But still, imploring God, we say, let's eat. Let's share this meal. The Israelites said it boldly in the wilderness, Sir, give us this bread always. Likewise, we pray boldly, give us today our daily bread, and thy will be done. Amen.